CataractCoach.com. Complications on post-op day one. These are two common things that you may encounter and you have to be able to recognize. Now, the first one is retain viscoelastic. Look at this case, routine case at the beginning of the surgery, putting in the viscoelastic. Notice how that dispersive viscoelastic is pushed into that opposite angle with the most force. Now, here at the end of the case, implanted the eye well and the caps are back. Again, a routine case. And we'll get that lens dialed in, the caps are back. Everything looks pretty routine. And we're going to wash out all the viscoelastic, right? Well, remember, especially if you're a very efficient surgeon, if you're in this eye for just a few minutes, if this is a four, five, six minute cataract surgery, then you may not have run enough fluid through the eye to really remove viscoelastic. So at the end of the case here, look, now we've got mostly cohesive viscoelastic filling the bag. So go in under the eye well optic, removing that. I'm using a high vacuum, high flow, 500 millimeters of vacuum, flow of 50 or 60 cc's a minute to really crank through that, getting out all the viscoelastic. And it looks pretty darn clean. Notice how we're going around the eye. Look, going towards the angle on top of the eye is going 360. We looks like we've removed all the viscoelastic, right? And I like the rexus. It overlaps the optic. Looks like a pretty good case. Let's seal this up. Let's you know, go on to the next surgery. We're done. So we'll seal the incision here. All looks pretty good. Again, you don't notice anything unusual. But this patient's going to have a high pressure of 50 millimeters of mercury on post-op day one. If you don't do this, look, angle sweep. Oh, my goodness. That's a lot of viscoelastic that came out of the eye. And watch. We'll do it again. There's a tremendous amount of retained viscoelastic still. And so this is a good example of why I like to sweep that angle at the end of every case to get out that retained viscoelastic. High pressure on post-op day one is not from a steroid response. It's from retained viscoelastic that's clogging up the trabecular meshwork and the IOP goes so high. So at the end of the case, you need to make sure you, you thoroughly remove the viscoelastic and do the angle sweep that I've taught you here. And look at that. There's still more viscoelastic. I can still see it. So don't just leave it like this. That's going to be a high pressure. Why suffer? Take out the viscoelastic. Go in again. And again, use this angle sweep technique. The angle sweep is a very useful tool here at the end of essentially every routine cataract surgery. Now we can seal it up. And if we do an angle sweep again, you know what? It's going to be clean. So a beautiful result here. Remember, don't leave viscoelastic inside the eye. Let's talk about another case. You see this post-op, post-op day one. There's a little bit of a bulge behind the iris. We have an anonymous resident who's doing this case. Let's watch the surgery carefully. Going to implant the lens here in the capsular bag. So it looks like a single piece of acrylic lens. Routine case, nice looking capsular axis. Pretty good, I'll take it. And there goes the lens, nicely placed in the bag. And now the resident's going to help get those haptics opened up and dial the lens into position. So here we go. Dialing that lens around, getting it into good position. And you tell me when you notice something. So now at the end here, removing viscoelastic and going behind the lens perhaps, maybe a little bit. Hey, good job, resident. Going behind that lens, remove viscoelastic and then take out the viscoelastic from the front of the eye. And I can already tell you that trailing haptic that's under the incision, it's not in the capsule bag. It's already come out. It's in the sulcus. And the resident doesn't really realize this, but you realize it because a couple clues. One, if you don't even see it directly, you look and say, wait, wait a minute. Where's the rexus? Do I see the full 360 overlap of the optic? No. Look to the right in the incision. That's where the rexus is under the IOL. And so in this case, in the subincisional area, that capsule rexus is under the IOL. That temporal or subincisional haptic is in the sulcus. Whereas the nasal one, haptic, is in the capsule bag. So this is not something you can leave. So the resident, again, doesn't realize this at all. And you think, ah, oh, it looks pretty good. I'll leave it be. But look carefully at that rexus to the right of the incision, and you can tell that's going underneath the IOL optic. And so this lens now is effectively half in the bag and half in the sulcus. And post-op day one, that bulge behind the iris is the haptic. A big haptic bulge there. So now you can see, look where that little red arrow is. That's the spot. 
And at this point, you should know that's where the lens optic is now coming out of the capsular bag because that subincisional haptic is now in the sulcus. So what do you do? Don't leave this. On post-op day one, we reposition. Here's the slit lamp on post-op day one. You can see the optic comes in front of the rexus there. And so now we reposition it. Now look at the orientation of the rexus. Now it fully overlaps for 360, for sure the entire lens of the bag. Don't ever leave a haptic of the sulcus because look at that inset picture. You'll get UGH syndrome. Uveitis, glaucoma, hyphema, and you'll cause a lot of problems. So be careful on post-op day one. Have a good lookout. Make sure you're vigilant and take care of any of these issues as soon as they occur.